Hey everybody, hope the lighting is better. I changed my angles. I'm sitting in my comfortable office chair. I've got a circuit here which you'll see in the next video. This is a, I'll just give you a brief summary and then get right to the point of this video. This is a proper load tester on my desk here right now. This is just a power bank powering the load tester. It needs electricity to run its computer. But I've got another set of batteries here, separate from the ones you saw the other day. And again, this will be shown later. But uh, just to briefly summarize, I've got multiple testing platforms going on with the same type of batteries and the same setup and combination until it runs this course on these experiments here. And then I'm going to work on up to uh, 12 volt, small 12 volt, I don't happen to have one here, um, The what I call the alarm batteries, the 7 amp hour 12 volt batteries, the small convenient carry ones. That'll be next, and then I'm going to get you up into the household sized, golf cart sized, 100, 200 amp hour batteries. But one step after another, um, this can also be done with... It's going to be hard for me to show you this. It can also be done with flashlight batteries, but I'm not having good results because the voltage difference between the two to light an LED is not high enough to make the LED light brightly. It's, br it's lit, but I'm trying to come up with a cool plan here. I mentioned it briefly to somebody in a comment. And I have an idea for this, to build circuits for people to experiment with home, or with at home. But I've got to come up with a proper load that you can do at home. But this is a, a really neat looking experiment I'm doing. So you can do it with all different batteries that are rechargeable. I first though I want to go over, I'm going to run this thorough, absolutely. I'm performing a lot of tests. This is my fourth day now, running batches of, of 18650 um, flashlight, lithium ion flashlight batteries through multiple various tests. And the reason is, I want to know, as well as to show you, what exactly is going on here. So I'm running at hardcore. The point of today's video, though, is to tell you what is going on here and where I got it. So this is started out I believe with Carlos, I don't know if I'm saying it right, Benitos um, about a hundred and some odd years ago developed a system for rapidly switching batteries and his system though was different and I'm gonna give you some disclaimers and warnings as we go his system was a lot different from what I'm doing, by far. And then later, um, there was, uh, I forgot all the names, there's so many people have experimented with this and put their name to it in different ways, shape, and form throughout the years. It has been recently been known as the um, Tesla 4 battery switch. How that name came to be, I'm not sure. But through moderations and changes in, in the years, it is now called the Tesla 4 battery switch. Which, by the way, I'm not exactly doing here. I've got a, a different sort of setup. There's no switch on my table right now. And here's where, before you jump out and start doing you can look it up. The Tesla 4 battery switch. Um, accredited to Nikola Tesla for whatever reason. I'm not looking into the background of that. I don't care. But the point being that um, it's a four battery system that rapidly switches back and forth, round and round and round, while running uh, a motor or a light. Well, I wasn't too excited about that. I might apply something like that in the future, but not with the electronics and the switching and controls that they show. Because most of them, most of the people who have done this, are destroying their batteries. I have no interest in destroying batteries. Uh, I have a lot of interest in preserving and prolonging the life of batteries, and I have some upcoming videos on those topics as well. Um, some of the videos I started last year 
uh, with lithium ions and I have a lot of experience. I've got about 5,000 lithium ions now that I've collected and I've done many experiments. So I'll have some videos on that too. I'm into prolonging the life of the batteries, not destroying batteries. Which is why I run a max of 4 volts instead of 4.0, uh, 4.2 volts. And that's a topic for another day. Anyway, if you build a circuit the way they show it, it could be unsafe for you, and it could be unsafe for your batteries. And um, it's also going to be very, very complicated to set up. And a key point of what all the experimentals out there are doing, they're trying to set up this super rapid switching system to switch batteries around like hundreds of times a second. All right, and um, I'll get to why that's no good for the battery, but they're switching hundreds of times a second and then trying to tap some energy from the environment, which I'm not against the idea, but they're trying to tap some energy from the environment and suck it in to their batteries to power the load while keeping the batteries charged. Now, if you manage to do such a thing, you got the risk of overcharging all the batteries and boom, you've got a mess. And the other thing is trying to tune such a thing is complicated. And then my point, um, this has all been done with lead acid batteries that I've seen on all the experiments and all the people who've done this, they use lead acid batteries and that's what's in the diagrams and all the drawings and schematics and all the people have done it with lead acid batteries. But to properly the proper care and use of a lead, lead acid battery is to, here's what I'm talking about. The proper use and care of a lead, lead acid battery, the proper charging, charge it totally, let it rest, run the load, let it rest, charge it, let it rest. You get the point. The lead acid battery should rest in between charge discharge cycles. Lithium ion as well, but not as critical depending on the temperature. Um, temperature is everything. If you fast charge any battery, it's going to get warm inside. And then if you hit it with a discharge, it's going to get warm inside. You're going to annihilate your battery. If you are switching batteries such as these at high speeds, um, you're doing a lot of insane stuff. You're trying to, lead ions are really slow and I'm not going to get into chemistry or all the details of a battery, but the internal chemistry of the battery is pretty slow. And so you're hitting it a hundred times, hundreds of times a second, charge, discharge, charge, discharge. Just imagine super, super fast, faster than the battery can really handle. And it's not good for the battery. Um, a lot of comp complicated stuff I don't want to get into right now, but it's not good for the battery. I have no interest in, nor will you see me anytime soon, running switching at super high speeds. Maybe later, just for kicks, on a different type of battery or even capacitors, but I'm not going to be doing it with a lead acid battery. I have no interest in fast switching a lead acid battery. It's just not good. Um, lithium ion, again, charging causes heat, discharging causes heat. Let the things cool down in between cycles. What I've got going on is a very gentle half an amp load across two batteries, so 250 milliamps per battery. Some of you might know what I'm saying, some don't. It's a very gentle load and a very low and gentle charge and not even deeply discharged. So um, I'm working very gentle cycles on these. Um, that's what I do with all my lithium ions. But the point of my video is it's a very well known thing what everybody else is doing out there. This here, I've not seen, except for, I think, one person that I have seen has done anything even related to what I'm doing, and then even not to the depth I'm doing it. So, this is unique, and where I'm going with this, and the direction I'm going with this, is unlike anything I've seen anywhere at all. I have some unique electronics and controls and circuits I'm working on that I have not seen done anywhere else in the world. 
and I'm going to share some of it with you, but not all, down to the, the fine uh, bits and pieces of the electronics of it. But I'm going to share with you most of what I'm doing here openly and show you how to do it yourself at home. And I'm going to get up into showing you how to extend the life of your, or the usable energy from your solar, your home solar power manually. I have here something I may or may not finish, but I'm putting together a series of switches to do all of this with convenience and comfort. And although these are really, really tiny for my convenience and do not tape up much space on the bench, but the here's a little, uh, what do you call it, a spoil alert. I want to give you a little idea of something I will be doing in the future. Switches. And I'll show you how to do that for your home solar power. Um, I'm going to be very careful in doing that because if you're switching and you hit the wrong switches and you mess up and you go boom. So I'm going to be very, that's why I'm hesitating and pausing as I speak on some of these things because um, I want to be careful how much I show you what I show you so that you don't have an accident at home. We don't want that. Anyway, that's what this is about. But again, I want to clarify the commonly known Tesla switch. And I'm not going to show you the circuits because I have no interest in pointing anybody to go there. Um, there are some people, and I'm not a name dropper, but there's somebody who had a, a very long video talking about how uh, a very popular and famous um, circuit that everybody's building destroys batteries. And he was very adamant and very clear about how this destroys batteries. And so I'm not going to lead you that way. If you want to do it, go ahead and have fun. Get some jump batteries, blow them up, play with them, have fun, do it outdoors, wear safety glasses and all that stuff. But anyway, um, I'm not advising anybody to do such a thing. I'm not going to stop you and I can't stop you, but I'm going to lead you in a more gentle manner of using your batteries and cycling them to get a lot more energy out of them that I haven't seen anywhere else. Anywhere. And again, I'm not trying to draw energy from the environment into the system yet. Um, I, I'm, I'm also not going to try to um, draw energy from like from the air or atmosphere, but I don't want to get ahead of us. I will be adding energy into the system later to offset the internal losses in the batteries, and that's all I need. That's it. That's all I need. So we'll be covering that later, and uh, I hope this does excite a lot of people and get you stirred up and thinking about how you can increase the usable energy from the batteries and the solar power system that you already have. But please bear with me. Have patience. Don't try to jump ahead because um, you can easily damage your lead acid batteries. And I might be doing a video on that later about how many homesteaders are damaging their lead acid batteries and off-critters. But um, I sort of summarized that a little bit so you can think about what I said and put that into real world application, but I'll cover that later. Anyway, I'm going to carry on. I've got another video coming. Uh, depends on when I get this video up. My internet is horrendously slow, like beyond third world country slow. Um, I'm going to get this up to you, and then the next video will be showing the switching of those batteries um, through a couple different cycles, and then you'll briefly see this. And then the next video after that is going to be a full, hardcore discharge through a computer with recording and memory and see what we really get out of these before we move on to the next step, the bigger batteries. So, please do like this video. I hope it is stirring people up and gets your attention and interest. And uh, stay tuned for the rest of the series. Talk to you later.